Hello everybody and welcome back to Auto Anorak. Today we are doing the big one. The big video of the year, probably my favourite video to make, even though it is an absolute pain in terms of editing, but you know, that's that's for me to worry about later. This is going to be a video covering every single car that Stratman has ever owned up to this point in 2021. That's right, we're going all the way back from MPV to Bugatti Veyron. This is going to be quite a spectacular video, hopefully a very in-depth one that gives a lot of you guys some insight into the Stratman collection, why he chose these cars, what he did with these various cars if you weren't previously aware. So let's get into it. Stroudman's car collection all the way up to 2021. <laughs> So a quick disclaimer, if you've watched my car collection video on the Stradman before last year, obviously there is going to be some overlap. So I have timestamps for all the cars at all the points throughout this video. So, you know, if there was a particular car you were interested in or like the last car for the last video was the Corvette C8. So if you click on the Corvette C8, then you'll get to see what he's added to the collection since then. So the first car of Stradman's that we've got on the list, I think was originally his parents. It is the Dodge Grand Caravan. Here we're looking at a 1995 Dodge Grand Caravan. Uh... Essentially a dishwasher on wheels, maybe a fridge. A fridge is probably a better explanation. And this was the first car that he learns to drive in and that's pretty cool to think about. Seeing his progression from what is effectively a fridge to cars that are essentially like airplanes. I mean the Bugatti Veyron is built like an airplane and when I talk about the Aventadors I'll give you an airplane link there as well. Now the next car I'm going to talk about is his old VW Passat. This is like an early 2000s Passat. And this was during a stage in which the Stratman was flipping cars for a profit. He may have gone through a couple of other cars. The Passat though is the one that everyone always told me about in the last video that I missed and it's the one that I'm going to mention. There were some other cars that Passat was the only one that he owned for more than just the period of selling a car. And the next one is an old pal of the channel that I think some of us will have fond memories of. It is his 225 horsepower Audi TT. I remember I watched a podcast of the Stratman and he said this was like his mini young life, midlife crisis almost. I think he'd just gone through a breakup, but then you just want to get it out of your head and you want to stop driving around in a Passat and get yourself something a bit sporty. Force yourself to live a little bit. So the Audi TT with 225 horsepower was his way of doing this. And to be fair, 225 horsepower car is not that bad at all, especially in something as small as a TT. This was a very iconic car in the channel. It had that like 2002 TT number plate and it was the one in his video where he described about him being homeless, that he had to change the fuel pump on overnight. He had researched it for weeks and weeks and weeks. It was the one part he needed in his car to get it to move because he was living out of his car, car spotting. Very much humble beginnings and whoever would have thought that a car spotter living out of his Audi TT would have done something like this. He owned it for a number of years. I think he sold it for like three or four grand. The next car. It's the car I definitely remembered the most whenever I first started watching the channel because it was in his little intro clip. I will play it again. I played it in last video, but it's so iconic. Hopefully that brings back some amazing memories to OG Stradman fanboys like myself. And this was the intro that was on some of those Bugatti top speed run videos that I used to watch and also the Lamborghini Venino videos. Anyway, his Lotus Elise, very cool car, lightweight, Toyota engine, so it is actually quite reliable. It's in that kind of like Cinderella blue color, I'm gonna call it. To be honest, not my choice. I'm more of a deep blue kind of guy for cars, but it's different, it's unique, and it's very cool to see a Lotus in the US. And this was the car where Clayton from Summit Auto Lab actually discovered who Stradman was. They both went to these car meets in Utah where there were a lot of older guys probably pulling up in their Corvettes and stuff. Clayton had a Porsche Cayman and Stradman had an Elise. So they both had these foreign lightweight sports cars and they were both young. So I think that helped them gel pretty well. So that, that's a bit of a cool insight to the Lotus Elise. <laughs> And the next car, I will always say the most iconic car on the channel, his 2006 six-speed manual Lamborghini Gallardo. <laughs> Iconic 
Strad car on the channel. I know there's a lot of brand new subscribers to the Stradman YouTube channel that maybe haven't even seen this car driving around at all, but believe me, when this thing drives with its straight pipe, X-pipe exhaust system that Life of Palos gave him, because he got Palos up to 40,000 subscribers, when you hear it, you will see why I'm so hyped. This thing has some super legera parts, like the spoiler, it's got some 305 forged wheels, it's got lowered suspension, and of course, at the moment, it's a B-Road built, getting a full twin turbo system. It's gonna be running about 750 horsepower. This is not like an underground racing system. This is literally just to get a bit of a power bump and also to hear some of that turbo noise, some of that spicy noise. <laughs> It's the first car he put a ski box on, it's the first car he did a wrap on, and it's the first supercar that he took off-roading, he put like a ski donut behind it, he even skied behind it with matching camouflage skis. Just an incredibly iconic car that I will certainly never forget in a hurry, can't wait to see it get back when it is finally twin turboed. The next car is potentially the slowest car on the channel, there is another contender for that that of course I will talk about later, but it was his Jeep Wrangler. Now this car is very interesting, he bought this because him and his brother were always really into Jeeps and off-roading when they were younger. His brother has a Land Rover Defender, so you can see where that kind of off-roading spirit comes from within his family, and he bought his Jeep Wrangler for that, and also because he recognized a gap in the market in that Jeep Nation wasn't necessarily being fed the sort of content that they needed on YouTube. There wasn't a ton of Jeep people on YouTube, and he thought that he could fulfill that gap in the market. James did a few mods to this car, some really nice wheels, a bit of an exoskeleton on it, but that was about it. Of course he took it off-roading and he started flexing on the nation, doing a bit of rock crawl and get a bit of that chassis flex, but that was about it. This thing didn't have any incredible power mods and it was incredibly sluggish going onto the highway. Next is what James says is the best $500 he's ever spent. Him and Clayton bought a go-kart. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. They got pulled over in this thing. They even just ran some errands and went to McDonald's, but I think after getting pulled over, they just realized that it was wasn't worth it. This hasn't been shown on the channel at all for years. However, if they have it, I'm really hoping they have it, or I mean, James obviously has enough money to get a brand new one. Anyway, my point is they can get a go-kart. And when Burlacker sold the Rolls-Royce limo, they have this money remaining that is essentially James's, but both of them are going to spend it. And they asked everyone, hey, what project should we do with this? My proposition is that they get a go-kart, but either put a jet engine on it or like a Hayabusa bike motor and just make it insane. Obviously Stradman is going to have a go-kart track outside of his new house. So I think this aligns so well. Imagine creating this ridiculous go-kart creation and then maybe have matching ones for himself and the Burlacker. This would be the coolest idea ever. Imagine racing jet go-karts. You can literally have the most insane version of Mario Kart in real life. <laughs> in their own back garden. James, listen to me. Fans, tell me. Other Strad fans, let me know what you think in the comments. If you're hyped about it, you can maybe tell, but I'm kind of hyped in this idea. And on to the next car. We still got quite a bit to go. It's the Audi R8 V8. <laughs> This one was not a manual. But why you ask? James wanted to rent this thing on Churro, make a bit of money on the side. Of course, he's always thinking about money. He's very financially conscious. He's financially conscious, that's the word. And so he's trying to see, can he maximize a bit of money out of this car from showing stuff on YouTube about it? Can he maximize a bit of money by renting it on Churro? But there weren't too many people that rented this car, especially when it got the massive rally lights and the roof box. James found the whole process incredibly stressful and decided to never do it again. This car resulted in one of my favorite Stradman videos of all time, which is when he gets stuck in the middle of nowhere in an Audi R8. I'm an idiot. And that is, I think, the best time whenever he says, all my decisions in my life have led up to this point. How has this happened? How have I led my life down a road in which I'm stuck on the side of the road trying to hitchhike my way back home so that I can get help for my Audi R8 which has rally lights on it that I got stuck in the middle of the desert while filming a YouTube video. It's amazing when you think about it, every single decision I have made up until this point has led me to this exact moment in time where I'm standing on a road with my Audi R8 in a ditch. One of my favorite. 
favorite moments in the entire channel. And then, very topical if you watch my latest video on Baby Mac 2.0, the McLaren 570S, the original Baby Mac. <laughs> giveaway car. Again, he trolled us with this. We thought it might be a GT3 RS. The 570S was a sign that things are starting to get moving on the Stradman channel. It was the first brand new kind of supercar that they had on the channel and the mods to it were amazing. There were some 10, 16 industry parts, P1 front hood, rear spoiler. I think there might have been some side skirts and some lovely black wheels. The paint finish was like a nice mad ice blue color. But above all, the exhaust, the sound, the flames. Take a look. <laughs> Now next is James's favorite car in the entire world and my favorite car in the entire world. It could only be the Lamborghini Aventador LP700-4. <laughs> The Lamborghini Aventador. Eventually, he wrapped the car in his famous signature matte chrome purple color. The car got some 1016 industry goodies like the carbon front hood, some side skirts, and a rear spoiler. And then it got some big custom white wheels, which started this whole purple and white paint scheme. And it's got what he says is his favorite mod he's ever put on any car, which is a full IPE straight pipe exhaust system. Take a listen. <laughs> It was the cheapest Aventador in the country at the time, I think like 230-ish thousand dollars, and yeah, amazing, still on the channel. And yes, that car is going to be getting twin turboed. It's gonna be one of just a small handful of twin turbo Aventadors out in the world. If you don't know what those sound like, here's a couple of videos. <laughs> The next car is a car that was hyped very much. There's always a couple of cars every single year since probably this car that have gained a huge amount of hype on YouTube that a number of different YouTubers have gone for. The goal of YouTubers is obviously to get lots of views and whenever there's a large phenomenon around a certain car where loads of people are incredibly interested, they wanna jump onto it. So Hoovy's Garage got a Gladiator. Edmund Mondi has one, Edmund Mondi has one. Anyway, Stratman got one. Come on, Gladiator. didn't go for the big like launch edition package. There's a video of him getting annoyed. One of the only videos I've ever seen of Stradman getting annoyed. He was effectively just annoyed at the fact that they were ripping people off by charging them loads of money for just like cars that are basically like higher spec, but they cost way more money than the normal spec ones and you won't even get them as soon. Very strange kind of thing. And I can see why Stradman was frustrated about it. This car has gone much further than any sort of launch pack could ever bring it. This build is perhaps my favorite build on the the Stradman channel as of yet and it's almost purely sentimental because ever since he had that Jeep Wrangler all those years ago he has wanted to do a six wheel conversion on a Jeep but he kind of figured well if I'm gonna do a six wheel version I may as well get like a really high spec Jeep so that I'm not running around in this car that had a really expensive conversion but it's actually a really cheap car at the bit. He wants to put the Elephant motor, thousand horsepower motor in it but that still hasn't happened. <laughs> And that Hellcat motor was done at B-Road Built, and then the six-wheel conversion is being done at Agility Customs. As of the time of recording, this one is very close to being done. It's got all six wheels. They've nearly figured out how the bed is going to look on the car, and I'm sure they're gonna be putting some bars up on it as well. It's gonna just look nuts. Probably my favorite build as of yet because of how long I've had to wait for it. Next is a car that I'm gonna have a little cry about because I kind of made a video slightly dedicated to it whenever I made my video on Stradman's puppy, Oscar. Because because this was his car, the Ford Focus RS. Never done full sand! I want one full six here! Yes, Stradman technically bought his puppy a car, but then he decided to fit an exhaust to it that was apparently as loud as his Aventador exhaust. So yeah, his dog didn't really like that. 
Nick is not happy. We tested the top speed in this car and we didn't really see too much of it. It was kind of a daily driver that was designed to just be a low key car in his fleet that didn't stand out so much. Next is the car that Stradman claims was his best financial decision in terms of buying a car. It had the greatest ROI of any car he's ever had because it was the Toyota Super. <laughs> We have made it here to SEMA. He paid a 10K over sticker, so this car costs nearly $70,000 brand new. I don't know how much they're trading for in the US market right now, but it can't be that much. <laughs> The reason why he bought this car was there was a huge hype train, as I said, like the Gladiator, there was a massive YouTube hype train, TJ Hunt was going to get one, Adam LZ was going to get one, and Shmi was actually the first one to put it in an order, way before a lot of these guys. Stradman, however, did it all last moment, ended up having the first car in the YouTube space. He got well in excess of a million views for these videos. If you don't know Stradman, whenever he does an a million view video, and that's probably his average view amount currently, he gets roughly about $8,000. It could be up to 14,000 but we're gonna say 8,000. He did a lot of videos in that Supra and even though he modified it he definitely made his money back on that car if not made it back two or three times. This was a very special car for the Stradman channel because for years Stradman had been going to the SEMA show. You may remember that video that he took of the 458 Liberty Watt car getting crashed into by a Jeep. That got a lot of traction, a lot of views and I think Stradman many years before had kind of been blagging his way in with like fake passes and stuff like that. Again, it's a bit of that rags to riches thing of this man was kind of sneaking in the back entrances of SEMA. And now, with the Supra, he did that Rocket Bunny kit, he did the proper matte chrome purple, his signature purple on it, and deep dish white wheels. I think they may have been skull wheels. This got him center stage inside of SEMA. Literally the best place to be within SEMA. This was a very cool car, went up to about 500 brake horsepower, but it got sold to fund the hypercar. Next, I'm gonna say is the the most unhinged car that he's ever owned. It's the most impractical, useless car, but sometimes those are the most interesting ones to watch. This is his Ferrari 430 Challenge. <laughs> that he got around the time when he was doing those test track laps with the guys at Blinker Fluid. I think it was Blinker Fluid. Basically with this car, imagine a Ferrari 430 Scuderia except with literally no sound deadening, no crash helping things like airbag, th things you don't really need. It didn't have any of those, it just had a big roll cage that made it much harder to get into and an engine sound that would probably make your ears bleed. It was a manic car, it was a crazy car, he nearly crashed it. Whoa, no! No! <laughs> and he turned it in that like mermaid color. I think it looked all right, although over time I've decided I much prefer the purple. I don't know how you guys feel. If he was going to do a color along that kind of like bluey greeny thing, I would just much prefer a full on turquoise car like the Altani SV. Take a look. Our next chapter in Stradman's car collection takes us all the way to Hawaii. Stradman and Tessa went over to Hawaii to pick up a 2005, I think it was 2005, Ford GT. <laughs> white with some blue stripes. A really lovely spec. This car is just so iconic. I think it was in pretty much every single video game I played growing up. It's just an icon of our generation as car people that watch Stradman. This car unfortunately did not stay on the channel for too long, but it did receive an incredible sounding exhaust. He of course did some donuts in it, and yeah, hopefully we may see one in the future with a twin turbo kit. You never know. Next we have a car that I was going to talk about. This could arguably be the slowest car that has ever been in the Stradman fleet. Now this car was only in the Stradman fleet for a small amount of time because then it got gifted to the Burlacker. It is his Rolls Royce limo. <laughs> This was the most 
expensive car in the world, apparently. According to Stroudman, in 1989, it had champagne in the back, it had that really obnoxious aerial on the back, but it is just a bit of an 80s monstrosity, but it's definitely like a time capsule into the levels of excess in the 1980s. This was a very squeaky car, it was a very leaky car, it was a very stinky car, and needless to say, it reduced house prices across the entire neighborhood whilst it was in their custody. This car was buried by the Burlacker and Stradman, and of course it was also taken out of its grave and eventually was bought by Lambo Fan, who actually commented on my video on that. So thank you so much, Lambo Fan. Check his channel out because I think it's gonna be getting pretty good. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Next is an example of American muscle, but brought into the 21st century in the form of the Corvette C8. <laughs> This was probably the most hyped up car out of all these YouTube hype cars that I've talked about previously. And it was actually worth the hype. I think the Supra left some people underwhelmed. The C8 seems to be the car that has the best overall consensus from people. It just seems to perform so incredibly well. It's at such an amazing price point. I really do wish we got them over here. Imported over here, they cost $135. So buy a brand new R8 V10 or buy a Corvette C8. I know what I'd pick. Of course, this is one of the first ones on YouTube with thanks to Chevy Guy. It was white, it was done in the iconic matte chrome purple color, and it was eventually bought by Chandler David Smith, who does some really good real estate videos. If you're into Graham Stephan, uh, he's friends with Graham Stephan, you'll enjoy that channel. And the car currently is still in that matte chrome purple with some Stradman signature white wheels. Next is another example that potentially provides evidence for why America make some of the best car names, it's the Ford Shelby Raptor. <laughs> in the name that is just effortlessly cool. Unfortunately, unlike Baby Burlacker's Raptor, this has the, the teeny weeny V6. And when I say teeny weeny, I mean it's it's still a 3.5 liter V6. It's still way bigger than the engines I've ever had in any of my cars. And it's the engine that was in the Ford GT. This is now sort of his new dealie that I guess replaces the Ford Focus RS as Oscar's car currently. He hasn't done too much to this because Shelby obviously have done a few things, but he did put some tank tracks on it and and nearly experienced death on a trail with the Diesel Brothers and it's got a purple carbon steering wheel which I just think works very well. He's also got a little wrap on it so he's got some purple stripes to match that white paint. It's a very good looking truck that he has made an effort to make louder but he still is questioning whether he should put a V8 in it. This one's probably the car that maybe left a lot of people disappointed. It's the car that was on the channel for I think the least amount of time. The black Ferrari 458 Spider. <laughs> This is one of my dream cars, and I think it's a car that Stradman probably really wanted to have in his collection because it was a car that he filmed alongside the Liberty Walk Aventador at SEMA. And you can definitely see that within the Stradman collection, he likes tracing back to stuff that did really well for him in his infancy whenever he didn't have anything near the levels of money that he has today. So Stradman wanted to do the original Liberty Walk kit on this, not the silhouette kit. I could just tell, he just, he never wanted to do that kit. He wanted the classic one. I totally agree, James. It looks infinitely better. I think that of all the silhouette kits, the silhouette kit on the 458 is maybe the most controversial looking. I really like the Huracan and I really like the GTR silhouette, but yeah, this one, I don't think it's it. This 458 had the king of all mods on 458s, a full straight pipe IPE exhaust system. It just sounded amazing. <laughs> God bless frequency intelligent. He had even ordered the Liberty Walk kit for this car. It was ready to use on the vehicle, but then he found a really good deal on another car, which I'll tell you about later. And Chandler David Smith was like, yeah, I really want a 458. Like if, if you ever want to sell your 458, please give it to me. GM started considering selling it to get this other car. Long story short, Chandler David Smith has the car in his collection. And now one that I'm sure many of you have been anticipating for me to talk about, Stradman's very first hypercar and this car is very special because to me it is the first hypercar on automotive YouTube and you're gonna ask me 
well, what do you mean by this, John? There have already been other guys that have owned hypercars on YouTube. Well, what I'm talking about is GMs has essentially recorded his whole journey from living out of an Audi TT up to the Bugatti Veyron. He has been a YouTuber for the entire time that he's been like developing his success. And that to me is really amazing. This is his Bugatti Veyron 16.4. <laughs> quite a checkered history from what I've been told. I know that it was crashed slightly, but I, everything's been repaired. Everything mechanically is fine in the car. And ultimately, if you repair your car and maintain it, even if it's at 22,000 miles, if you maintain it to Bugatti service standard, don't worry, like it, it's gonna be fine. So he got this car at a major discount. I believe it was a bit over $800,000. And this is Stradman's only car that he has on finance. Everything else is completely paid off because Stradman hits debt. He did 50% finance, 50% he's paying, so he's got about half a million dollars to pay off in this car. And this is the only one that he says. It doesn't make sense financially, but the reason he has this is as a unique selling point for his channel. Something that makes you remember his channel as different from the rest, in that he owns a Bugatti Veyron. And amongst all of the YouTubers that own Lamborghinis and Ferraris, being the guy that has a bright purple Bugatti Veyron makes you stand out and it makes you wonder, how on earth has this young dude got a Bugatti Veyron? List of mods. This one already had some custom wheels from the factory. It also comes with Bugatti Sang Noir wheels, but he doesn't put those on most of the time because the tires on it are worth $40,000. You don't want to get a puncture in those. And the car was wrapped by Faith and Clayton at Summit Auto Lab, of course, in the matte chrome. Purple color, white wheels, white two-tone body on the car, and it's got a full rift exhaust system from Houston Crosta at Royalty Exotics. And I think the car is probably producing about 100 horsepower more than stock because of that exhaust. It's really cool. It sounds just like thunder. Don't worry boys, we're in the last few cars remaining. Next is the Lamborghini Aventador Pirelli Edition. <laughs> the look of this car. I always made Pirelli edition Aventador replicas in Forza Horizon 3 many years ago and I had a lot of fun doing it. This one however has a bit of a checkered history. It was crashed. I can't remember the exact reason why it was crashed. You can watch Stradman's video on that but he thought that this would be a perfect opportunity to bring back the dream of having a Liberty Walk supercar and he decided that he's going to do the kit on this car and it makes sense because you're not taking away from a car that was absolutely perfect and pristine. You're not going to annoy people that are worried about that. Equal though he is thinking about repainting this car which is quite interesting considering that the only thing that really makes the Pirelli edition unique is the livery that it has. He's thought about doing this car in that like mermaid color, he's thought about doing it in like a macrome pink, maybe a macrome purple of course. I'm saying he should do it in the Altani SV turquoise color. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is a car that he's working on all by himself, it's gonna take him a lot of time because these cars are very complicated and it's gonna have the entire brand new Liberty Walk Aventador kit. One of 50 in the entire world, full carbon fiber kit. And fun fact, as we talk about carbon fiber and Aventadors, I told you I was gonna say about it earlier, the Lamborghini Aventador has a link to the aeronautic industry because the carbon fiber used in the Aventador was made in conjunction with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Yeah, that's that's right, they use the same sort of technology. It's like a carbon fiber plastic type of deal. It's a more cost-effective way of making carbon fiber that is pretty much just as strong as regular carbon fiber. He's doing this build all by himself, really excited to see it. Hopefully it is ready for summer so you can get the roof down on that Pirelli edition Roadster and just soak up those views on views. Next is a car that I feel currently is being a little bit neglected and now that I've said this, there's probably going to be like 15 videos of this car uploaded before this video comes up, but never mind. This is his 2017 Nissan GTR. <laughs> up to 
700 horsepower. It has some Boston wheels, which I personally don't like. I like gold, but I don't like how it contrasts with the orange. I don't know if you guys feel the same. Let me know, am I being really stupid? Am I just not getting what good wheel design is? Anyway, this hopefully shouldn't matter because I believe he's gonna do a Gen 1 Liberty Walk kit on this thing, which I think is going to look nuts. And he's potentially tuning this thing to 1400 horsepower. I imagine at the moment he's trying to go through some discussions and see how he can get 1400 horsepower out of it. I'm excited for this. I'm excited for the color to be changed because I, I don't know how I feel about the color. I'm excited for the body to be changed. Okay, I'm excited for a lot of things to change in this car. And this car may wear the number plate Bug Killer because it's likely that this car is going to be faster than his Bugatti Veyron. That's the goal at least. I think that's an incredible idea because anything with Bugatti Veyron versus in the title, it's just always going to go viral. And now the final car as of the making of this video, the McLaren 12C Baby Mac 2.0. <laughs> If you haven't watched it, I do have a complete video on this car, but I'm very excited for it. There could potentially be some very cool mods on it, and it's going to create another great timeline within the various different timelines that exist in the Stradman universe, because we all know that the 12C is going to be constantly under threat of breaking and exploding. And now, before you all leave, we're actually going to do a bonus segment, because I have an idea of what the next vehicles are in the Stradman fleet. As I discussed earlier, 2021 is sort of the year of changing up the vehicles that are brought into the Stradman vlog. So he's getting his pilot's license. It should probably be finalized by the time this video is done. And we're probably going to be seeing a runway, I'd say in about a year or two, out the back of his house that he's gonna be able to fly into and fly out of so he can get those views on views and go to all the other beautiful states of America. That's gonna add a new element to the vlogs that I'm very much looking forward to. And then also cars. I've made a complete video on this one as well. Sorry for doing shameless plugs, but I'm gonna do it. I am 99% confident that Stradman is going to be getting a Mark IV Supra. And finally, you guys might not believe it, but I believe it. Stradman, I feel, is actually going to get a Lamborghini Veneta Roadster. Now, this hasn't been talked about too much. It's been something that's just mentioned here and there in vlog. Palos has probably picked up on it as well. Just think of how far Stradman has come in the last five or six years from a Lotus Elise to a Bugatti Veyron. I can definitely see him getting a Lamborghini Veneta Roadster. That was always his ultimate dream car. It is his ultimate dream car. I can personally remember the video coming out of him hunting down that car on the east coast of America. To this day, I don't know if I've ever seen Stradman as hyped in a car. Even in the video where he unveils his Bugatti Veyron, I know he'd already seen that before. But yeah, he wasn't even as hyped up as that. I mean, he was so hyped up to see these Venenos. But yes, I cannot wait for the day whenever I'm talking about Stradman's collection and he adds his Venino to the collection. Like, it's just going to be nuts. So, thank you so, so much all of you that have made it to this point in the video and if you enjoyed it please consider subscribing because I'd love to have you here we love Stradman here we love Shmi we love DDE we love all these guys if you like the supercar community and you've always had some burning questions about specific automotive youtubers how they make their money why have they bought certain cars questions like these I'm answering them right here doing the homework so that you guys don't have to this video has taken quite a long time to make so I'd really appreciate it again thank you so much for watching I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next next video. Thanks guys.